So our first story, uh, if you if you watch the little preamble video to these live streams, I, I always try to have uh, a stand up clip or something from from my stand up catalog, uh, which includes the virtual shows and the forkful of the noodles stuff. Um, you know about a particular topic. So Daniel Everett Hale is is that topic for 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 today, and you guys heard. Uh, he is a whistleblower that revealed the uh, homicidal and murderous drone program, um, and he had a crisis of conscience. So Daniel Everett Hale released the drone papers to The Intercept, and I remember this, you know, uh, it, Amy Goodman, when she reported it, kind of, it was, it was weird the way she reported it, um, and I didn't want to get too hung up on that when I did the show, but you know, we're, we're doing a, a, a loose, fun live stream. So fuck it. Well, let, let's go down this rabbit hole for a second. She says that, you know, the, the journalist was not um, revealed. The, who, who, who Daniel Everett Hale revealed, you know, the, the leaked documents to, uh, which included the kill chain, um, you know, kind of the bureaucracy of assassinations. Uh, and... They're like, oh, well, he didn't reveal the journalist, but later it was found out that it was the Intercept's Jeremy Scahill, who, you know, then wrote the the drone papers, which was which was four or five different articles uh, that basically outlined what what uh, Hale revealed, which was the the kill chain, which was the inaccuracy of the drone program, um, how how they kill people, they don't really tell you, you know, who your targets are and things like that. Uh, and he had a crisis of conscience. He was working on this, and he had a crisis of conscience um, about not knowing who he was killing and and whether or not he was killing civilians or not. And he couldn't really go through with it anymore. So he revealed the program. Now, in the Intercept articles, the initial Intercept articles that came out in, I, I want to say 2015, 2016, sometime around there, um, and I did a whole video about it the the, the week that it came out because it was kind of big news, um, talking about how we have a war on whistleblowers and you know uh, how America doesn't its policy is kill the messenger. America has a kill the messenger policy, uh, rather than putting the war criminals in prison. And what these leaks revealed, uh, they go ahead and punish the leaker anyway. That's America's policy, and it's convinced the rest of the world to fucking do that anyway to, as well. In the article, they did not reveal who their sources were, which I know that's not a thing for The Intercept anymore. Um, but in the article, they referred to him as, I, I think they referred to him as the whistleblower or, or, or something like that. They kind of give him a little code name um, because he didn't want to come forward. Why? And a lot of people chastised him for it is, well, why aren't you revealing the name of the fucking source? Like, why aren't you revealing the name of the, the leaker? What have you? And it's because... Look at what they're doing to him now. He came forward and they are trying to put him behind bars for 50 years. So why would he initially come forward? He revealed all this information. He, you know, he he was part of the United States Air Force and he was privy to this stuff. But if if the if the conclusion is that you're going to wind up in prison for the rest of your life, for revealing how murderous and inaccurate this drone program is that everybody was kind of praising. Why would you come forward? You, you, your whole life would be wrecked, you know? So I don't blame any whistleblower for, for not wanting to come out and, you know, exposing themselves because the United States government will retaliate against you in the worst possible fucking way. So, you know, one of the things he revealed was in, in 2012, 2013, he, um, he revealed that in Afghanistan, over 200 people were killed, or roughly 200 people were killed. And only about 35 of them were intended targets. That's a less than 20% accuracy. Less than 20%. But yeah, Daniel Everett Hale is the problem. Not the Obama administration that approved the program 
that killed 200 people. 35 of those were the targets that need, that that America was going after, I guess. They have a less than 20% accuracy. But yes, Danny Everett Hale is the problem for revealing this information to the American public. The American public is often propagandized into supporting warfare, into supporting invasions, into supporting coups. You see that with, with you. well, we saw that with Iraq. You've seen that with Syria. You've seen that with Iran. We've seen that with Venezuela. We've seen that with Cuba. We've seen that with Nicaragua. We've seen that with Honduras. We've seen that with Bolivia. I mean, the list goes on and on. Where they perpetrate some kind of war, they perpetrate some kind of military action, and then when it turns south, they bail. The situation gets worse. They need to get more resources, and they need an excuse to go to war. So they propagandize the American people. Most people don't want to go to war because it's a it's a waste. It's a total waste. Especially when you see what the cost of war is. The human life, the cost of human life that war takes, the environmental effects that war takes. And then when soldiers come home, you know, the United States military can't bother to fucking take care of them. And when soldiers have the, 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 the balls and the guts to say what the United States is doing is wrong, they imprison those soldiers. Or they exile them, as in the case of Edward Snowden. Or they torture them. Well, I mean, Julian Assange isn't a soldier, but he is being tortured by the United States. Um, period. Now, the the drone missiles that have been upgraded, and and there's variants of these and things and things of that sort. Like one of the variants that they talk about in the article I read was you know it can like pierce through metal plates so if you're in a reinforced bunker it can go through that you know the missiles that these drones launch can go through that um there's one that releases six inch blades spinning blades as it approaches targets so now you're maiming and killing people that aren't your intended target like, that's what that's designed for. And they'll do the same thing, right? They'll use the same excuse that Israel uses. Oh, it's collateral damage. Oh, oh, well, you know, what are we supposed to do when they have human shields? I I've said this once, I'll say it again. Fucking don't kill human shields. If you're going to claim you're the good guy, just don't fucking kill human shields. It's really not that hard. Watch me not kill human shields the entire live stream. Watch me do that. It's really not that hard. And then you got to ask, like, why is this necessary, right? Like, if these drones are so precise and the technology in them is so fucking good, why do you need spinning blades in your missiles? <laughs> Which sounds like it was, like cooked up by a fucking bond villain why do you need this it's because they're fine with killing civilians especially civilians that are not white most of the countries that they go after are are not just not not just used to be socialist or communist but they're also brown they're also resource rich and, you know, this is a country that was built out of white supremacy. So those philosophies are ingrained in what the people of this country do and how the government propagandizes its people. The politicians can come out and sit there and say that they're against racism all day and long. But when they act, when their actions and their policies essentially dehumanize an entire group of people, an entire country full of people, it doesn't matter how many tweets or platitudes you say, well, racism is bad. Your actions are showing the, uh, uh, you know, otherwise. It was, it, I mean, that, that was the one thing that I don't think liberals in this country really understood 
especially after Obama, is like, no, racism is still alive and well. It's systemic. And it's perpetrated by the government. Henceforth, the people kind of follow along with that. So if you want to reject racism, you have to reject the way the American government operates. You can't make excuses because it's your favorite politician or your favorite party. The other question you got to ask about these these fucking spinning blocks, how is this permitted? How is this fucking legal? How is the how is the Geneva Conventions not come down and been like, you can't fucking put spinning blades on missiles, guys? That's crazy pants. How is this okay? And knowing this, how are drone operators still working with the military? You have a less than 20% chance of hitting your target. Not just that, it's at this point guaranteed that collateral damage is going to happen. How uh, you, you can't convince drone operators that this is okay. There's a great song by Thrice on their album to be everywhere is to be nowhere. I th or to be nowhere is to be everywhere. One of the two. It's from 2017. A few years after Daniel Everett Hale. And he expresses uh, in, in one of their songs. I think it's called uh, it's called Drone, maybe. I can't remember the exact title of the of the song, uh, which I apologize for. It's a great album. It's one of the only anti-war albums that has that I know of in this generation. Maybe I'm wrong. If if I am, you know, I encourage you guys to leave. Uh, a comment, but it's a, it's it basically expresses exactly what Daniel Everett Hale talks about. He he just couldn't sit with it, knowing that I'm killing innocent civilians, or not knowing that I'm, you know, I don't I don't know. These targets are just they're blinking lights. It's like a video game, the gamified war. So currently, um, he's facing 50 years under the Espionage Act for leaking information to American journalists, right? And the Espionage Act is is um, specifically was well, it was written to demonize and attack socialists, anti-war socialists and communists in, this, in, in, in the early 1900s. Um, but, you know, specifically it was saying like it's it's. In, in 1917, it equalized the fact that you were an anti-war socialist to someone that was selling military secrets to the enemy. That's kind of what they equated it with. And this, and this is no different. They're saying, well, he leaked confidential information to the enemy is what they're claiming. So by Daniel Everett Hale re revealing this information to American journalists, the United States government trying him under the Espionage Act by saying that he revealed it to the enemies basically shows that the American military regards j American journalists as the enemy. Anybody that prints information that is... That is counter to what the the intelligence community and the military wants is officially the enemy. Now, obviously, things like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, M uh, NPR, PBS, th these are not the enemy. These are these are quote news organizations, which I'm I'm using that in quotes and I'm using that term very loosely. Uh, that follow what these intelligence agencies want you to say. They're not going to release things like the drone papers. They're not going to release things like what Edward Snowden revealed about the NSA. What they do is, you know, even in the interviews that they did with, with Snowden on Fresh Air and whatever the fuck else program um, that they invited him on, is that they ask him questions, silly questions like, well, why not come back to America? You know, face the music. It's like, no, you're not going to face it. They're not going to get a legal trial. They're going to get a sentencing. That's what's happening to Daniel Hale. At the end of this month, he's going to get sentenced. There's no trial for him. This is not how democracies operate. Democracies don't look at journalists that reveal horrific homicidal secrets about the American military as enemies. That's not how journalism operates. That's not how uh, democracies operate, rather. This is how military dictatorships operate. When, when it's revealed that your military is, 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 is doing illegal things and killing people killing civilians 
and claiming them as as collateral damage that's not okay and that's not how democracies work democracies don't indiscriminately kill people civilians journalists medics they don't they don't kill those kinds of people and say that it's collateral damage that this is how military dictatorships operate oh you're saying something counter to what we want people to believe kill that that's military that's military dictatorships that's that's the real that's the reality of this situation with daniel hale is that's what he, he revealed that we're not living under a democracy If this was a true democracy, if this was an actual fucking democracy and some this information got leaked and was released to the public uh, by journalists, there would be an investigation opened up on the Obama administration, on the Trump administration, and now the Biden administration about why they use drone warfare, why they are using weapons and missiles with six-inch spinning blades and that can cut through metal and all this other stuff and why they have a less than 20 percent accuracy rate and why they feel like that's okay to do what this case is is it's not a matter of legality it's really a matter of morality right the legality says what what hale did was wrong under the espionage act you don't reveal classified information no matter how horrific it is. Regardless of whether it's to an American journalist or not. And they'll, and they'll sit there and claim, well, he could have revealed it to... Well, he didn't. He didn't. Could have, would have, should have, right? I mean, he, he fucking didn't. The reality is that he fucking didn't. He gave it to an American journalist who then looked at the information that he leaked and wrote articles about it so that the public is aware of how the military operates, so that we can kind of push back against some of this propaganda. That the American military is a force for good. They're not. They're not. They're not. Sorry, bubble burst, I know, to a lot of nationalistic people that might end up watching this and try to shit post in the comments. The American military is not the good guys. They never were. They never have been. And it's very likely that they never fucking will be. But the morality in this situation says that killing innocent civilians, especially brown civilians, and, and making them casualty of war and just saying, oh, collateral damage, it happens when you're, when you're on a battlefield, is wrong. And they're not on a battlefield. They're in their home country. They're at try, trying to live their lives in peace, and they're getting drone bombed. You're, you're you're creating your own enemies at this point. So the question ends up being this, right? Whose side are you going to take? Are you going to take Daniel Everett Hale's side, who revealed American war crimes, who revealed the kill chain of a president that got the Nobel fucking Peace Prize for expanding American wars and championing capitalism to its utmost extreme? Or are you going to stand by the person that revealed that this person is not a good person? That's the question. Holly and Fred over on the Rockfins. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Hashtag, Holly says, hashtag free Daniel Hale. I agree with that. Hell yes. Uh, Fred, thank you for posting that thrice song. That's from above. That's what it's called. That's from above. It's about, it's about drone operators, uh, and not knowing who you're killing. It's a fantastic fucking song. Uh, and, uh, I, I might, you know what I'm, what I might do at some point, uh, after some of the stress clears up is I do want to, I do want to do a rock fin and, and Odyssey exclusive, um, and just do a review of this album, play a couple of the songs in the album and just talk about the and talk about them. I want to do that with some some you know pieces of pop culture. I've mentioned this several times before. Uh, it is something that I want to do. It's a, it's just a matter of how much time I have in my day, uh, you know. So, but Death from Above by Thrice. Uh, thank you for posting that. Um, 
Fred also says, oopsies are not acceptable. Fucking Obama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just a whoops. We blew up a wedding. Oh, who knew? That's so crazy. It looked like a looked like a terrorist camp. Oh, really? Did it? You can't tell the difference between a, 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 an Islamic wedding and a, and a terrorist camp. That makes you fucking racist. <laughs> it's completely ridiculous. But yes, Daniel Hale should be free. Absolutely should be free. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.